LIDAR is an acronym derived from the phrase light detection and ranging. It is an active remote sensing technique that uses laser scanning to directly collect three-dimensional data for mapping purposes. This presentation explains LIDAR applications across both built infrastructure and natural resource environments. This is the fourth of four RLOs developed on LIDAR remote sensing. Three related RLOs that cover basic principles, LIDAR systems, data collection, and data analysis are also available. In the third RLO in this LIDAR remote sensing series, LIDAR point clouds, as shown on the left, and LIDAR-derived products such as digital terrain models and digital surface models, as shown on the right, were introduced. This RLO presentation explores how LIDAR data and subsequent LIDAR-derived products are used in many diverse applications across both the built and natural environment. LIDAR applications in the built infrastructure environment will be discussed first. Corridor mapping, building extraction, airport surveying, mining, archaeology, and paleontology will all be discussed in greater depth on subsequent slides. LIDAR is an essential mapping technology in the transportation and utility industries. Corridor mapping is the term used by LIDAR data providers to describe the detailed LIDAR data acquisition along transmission lines or transportation routes. LIDAR remote sensing provides utility companies with three-dimensional point cloud data to accurately monitor encroachments on overhead transmission lines. The top left image shows vegetation in green, a transmission tower and transmission lines in yellow, and radii of acceptable clearance in red. The figure in the bottom right shows how vegetation found within these acceptable clearance buffers can be identified, shown in pink. From this analysis, maintenance crews can be sent to the precise areas where encroachment is an issue. Corridor mapping projects utilizing LiDAR data for engineering design of transportation infrastructure is increasing. As described in the second RLO in this series, LiDAR is collected from a variety of platforms including terrestrial, mobile terrestrial, and airborne LiDAR systems. The image is a colorized point cloud from a Texas Department of Transportation pilot study on the use of mobile terrestrial LIDAR for engineering design. Information derived from these transportation-related corridor mapping projects include site condition measurements such as road slope and lane width, as shown in the top left image, bridge and sign clearances, as shown in the top right image, horizontal and vertical clearance measurements for tunnels, as shown in the bottom left image, and asset inventory management and inspection, as shown in the bottom right image. Additional infrastructure applications in the LiDAR corridor mapping domain include as-built construction for intricate bridge visualization, as shown in the top left image, and culvert measurement prior to backfill, as shown in the top right image and pavement analysis for deformation and rutting, as shown in the bottom image. Some corridor mapping projects are primarily focused on historical preservation or cultural heritage applications. A Turkish study investigated the successful use of a mobile terrestrial LiDAR system as a method for rapidly collecting detailed building facade information from a historically significant 1400 hectare area in Istanbul that was in need of restoration. The image shows the transformation of point cloud data into a detailed line work rendering of the building facade. Another common infrastructure application of LiDAR data is automated or semi-automated building extraction and reconstruction. Using precise elevation data from airborne LiDAR systems, Roof surfaces can be deconstructed into planar features. The left-hand image shows two digital surface models. These models are used in the creation of the ortho photos found in the middle column and also in the extraction of planar features found in the right-hand column. 
The reconstruction of buildings from LiDAR data is a function of finding the intersection points of these adjacent planar features, as shown in Figure A, determining the corner points, as shown in Figure B, using the building footprint to create additional vertices, as shown in Figure C, representing all of the vertices three-dimensionally in Figure D, and finally, reconstructing the 3D building model from these vertices in Figure E. Airborne LiDAR data is also used extensively in airport surveying applications, including topography and feature mapping for airport GIS, as shown in the top left image, runway surveys, and airport obstruction surveys, as shown in the right image. These airport obstruction surveys are invaluable for safety purposes as the data is used to detect buildings, power lines, communications towers, and vegetation that may affect runway approach and takeoff for aircraft. At the intersection of scientific and commercial applications of LIDAR are the mining, archaeology, and paleontology LIDAR data user communities. While their objectives are different, i.e. mineral extraction for commercial purposes versus specimen extraction for scientific purposes, Terrestrial LiDAR systems are used in a similar manner for both applications, mapping and volume calculations. The graphic shows a basic volume calculation procedure. This scientific study site was scanned at the beginning and end of a day's work. The resultant gridded surface models were different from each other to determine the volume of sediment removed during that day's excavation activities. LiDAR applications in the natural resources environment will be discussed next. Hydrology, coastal, natural hazards, and forestry applications will each be discussed in greater depth on subsequent slides. Hydrologists study the movement, distribution, and quality of water on Earth. Modeling these water parameters depends on accurate elevation data which can be provided by LiDAR-derived elevation products. Thus, the collection and analysis of LiDAR data is frequently used in hydrology applications including surface monitoring of glaciers such as the Russell Glacier on the Greenland Ice Sheet as shown in the graphic, snowpack depth, terrain morphology, ground surface elevation, and wetland environment delineation. Flood and runoff modeling is another application of LiDAR data in the hydrology domain. The Southwest Florida Water Management District conducted a study analyzing the use of LiDAR data in its flood-prone area mapping. The top image shows hydrological catchment areas derived from photogrammetrically compiled one-foot contours and interpolated into a five-foot grid cell digital elevation model, or DEM for short. The bottom image is a 5-foot grid cell DEM interpolated from LiDAR postings. The photogrammetrically compiled DEM had errors with lines crossing catchment areas such as the borrow pit shown in the yellow box. The higher accuracy LiDAR derived DEM reduced these errors as shown in the bottom yellow box. The Water Management District concluded that LiDAR derived DEMs had both a higher accuracy and created a more detailed hydrological model which in turn produced a more accurate floodplain determination. Fluvial morphology is another hydrology application that has benefited from LiDAR data collection and analysis. The finished study shown in the graphic required high resolution data products for hydrological modeling of river processes. The boat-based mobile LiDAR system was able to capture the steep banks of the river at greater speed than stationary terrestrial LiDAR data capture. Meanwhile, terrestrial LiDAR scans were captured at river point bars to provide greater detail on sediment accretion. By merging the two terrestrial data sets together, the scientists were able to create accurate digital terrain models for temporal studies of fluvial processes. Similar to hydrology, coastal applications of LiDAR-derived products are numerous, including 
wetlands and habitat delineation, setback line demarcation, assessment of severe storm surge damage, tsunami and storm surge modeling, shoreline extraction, sand resource monitoring, safe navigation, shoreline mapping, and coastal land cover classification as shown in the image. New techniques are being developed that incorporate structural components of LiDAR elevation data with multispectral and hyperspectral sensor data to gain new insights into coastal land cover. Using the marsh as an example, the graphic shows how scientists can understand the elevation distribution of marsh grasses throughout the study area. This has implications in understanding the role of marsh grass in sea level rise scenarios. Coastal geomorphology is a coastal application domain that has benefited greatly from LiDAR-derived products offering enhanced elevation accuracy and increased coverage density over traditional beach profiling methods. With high-resolution LiDAR data collections, undersampling the beach profile with RTK GPS is no longer an issue. The graphic depicts a temporal study of beach elevation change grids in St. Augustine, Florida, with red indicating areas of sand accretion, orange areas indicating minimal change, and blue indicating erosion areas. Using this data, coastal scientists and engineers can better understand the dynamics of shifting sand resources. Accurate LiDAR data used in preparing for and assessing damage from natural hazards has become a necessity for local, state, and federal governmental agencies. Specific natural hazards where LiDAR-derived products have been used successfully include earth movements, such as landslides, coastal hazards, beach erosion, flood mapping, hurricanes, earthquakes and tsunamis, volcanoes, and sea cliff erosion as shown in the graphic. The figure depicts the use of terrestrial LiDAR data for analyzing the amount of debris that has eroded after large wave events. Forestry is a fundamental application area for LiDAR remote sensing. This graphic depicts the discretization process of a single LiDAR pulse as it makes its way from the aircraft to the ground intersecting various levels of the forest canopy on the way down and subsequently creating points at the intersections with each of these return signals. In areas with dense forest coverage, traditional photogrammetric means of digital terrain model creation would yield DTMs that have a lower accuracy than LiDAR-derived DTMs. While dense forest canopy can create sparse ground point determination from photogrammetric means, dense LiDAR will penetrate the canopy more frequently, resulting in a smoother DTM surface. The DTM derived from denser LiDAR data will aid in more accurate representation of the terrain. The image shows a canopy surface model on top and its relationship to the detailed underlying bare earth DTM in a Pacific Northwest forest. There are a multitude of forest inventory parameters that can be measured from both terrestrial and airborne LiDAR point clouds including stem locations as shown in the upper left image, diameter at breast height as shown in the upper right image, biomass and carbon parameters as shown in the lower left image, canopy height as shown in the lower right image, length of live crown, and canopy cover and closure. This RLO presentation started with a review of basic LiDAR-derived products, then an exploration of various LiDAR applications in both infrastructure and natural resource environments ensued. This included discussions on corridor mapping, building extraction, airport surveying, mining, archaeology, paleontology, hydrology, coastal issues, natural hazards, and forestry. We conclude this presentation with a list of web resources on LiDAR data analysis and data sources.